Hi, and welcome back to winemastery.co.uk. My name's John Lightfoot. This is... John Murphy. We're here to tell you all about wine, hopefully help you find the wine, if not the wines you will absolutely love. So, in this episode, we're looking at a slightly unusual, unusual from that point of view, the first two wines in, in part one, part two, we've not actually ever tasted before, so uh, the first grapes we've not mm. tasted before. And this wine is a Malbec that we're going to try in this, but not from a country. No. We've ever tasted uh, wine from. And would you like to tell? Yeah, because it's... Our viewer. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, this was quite a shock for me. It's uh, Mexico. 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 I yes. thought that'd be too hot and arid and dry and... Well, I suppose it, it, those certain grapes would grow well then. That... In the sand? I, I don't know. You don't I, hear I... of any in Saudi Arabia, do you? You don't? No. No. No, no I, I never have. But then to be fair, you know, I, I don't even know if the, a Mexican wine was on my radar. I don't even know if I'd... No, I've definitely not tried one. No. Uh, we've tried Malbecs before though. I think we've, we've done a video probably on the Malbecs somewhere yeah. in, in, in there. In, um, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to think. I don't know if it's going to be brilliant or I don't know. Well, it's an unknown. Let's, let's have a taste and see what we find. <laughs> <laughs> now, this one is from uh, Marks and Spencers, just in case anyone is it's to John's right, your left, in mm -hmm. case anybody would like uh, to, to taste along with the video. Um, nice, dark, rich mm, colour. It's like a burgundy colour, yeah. isn't it? I think it's got your infamous purple rim on it, hasn't it? Oh, it does indeed. It does indeed. Just looking at it there. Yeah, you it's can see that. It's a very thin one. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, sh a shimmering, co comes along, doesn't it? And then, yeah, brilliant. Alrighty. Righty. Oh, that smells nice. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. That's... Is that what you think is a typical Malbec? Yeah, yeah. that kind of nice... Um, you can, uh, there's a cherry and there's yeah. the black blackberries in there and kind of... Uh, all the black fruits all are in the there. All the black there, yeah? Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. I bet you'd have a long taste then. Oh, I can't see that. Because of all the black fruits. Oh, you're a bad man. You're going to get us in trouble. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You were... So, quickly skating over that one. Crikey. <laughs> You're not allowed to do tastings anymore. This... <laughs> you are so good because... <gasps> right, so... No, you're absolutely fine. So, yeah, so... It's got all those fruits in there, and then... It's got that... Um, I describe it as a stewiness. Stew. It's like all those fruits stewed up together. Yeah. And, and jammy and jammy. Yeah, it smells, it's got that sweetness, doesn't it? Mmm. It smells lush. Yes, it does. So, let's get in there. Mmm. <laughs> you made me you made me have to think before I open my mouth about what I was gonna say. <laughs> Stop it, stop it there. <coughs> well, excuse me, I said. So I need a minute, John. Give me a minute. Just a second. Oh, oh dear me. <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Right. Right, back to the wine. Yes. So, yeah. Now, let's have another taste, actually. <laughs> Just to remind you. Mm. 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 Uh -huh. My initial thought on that is the um, the tannins, which I, I never like that to be my initial thought on, because the tannins are a bit. I, I'm not I'm not a massive fan of tannins. I I, I need food really. And this wine needs food for me because the tannins are quite strong there. Um, flavour wise, I wonder. Just going back to your, you remember said that that sort of local wines tend to 
uh, adapt from the local food. Yeah. And I guess with sort of sp spicy Mexican food, mm -hmm. that would actually sort of quite complement it. Yes, yeah, it would, yeah, and it would definitely take the tannins off that as well. Yeah. <clears throat> so they would complement each other. On the, on the flavour front though, I got a lot more on the nose than I thought I would get. Uh, I know, I, I thought I'd get a lot of flavour from that, but it is a big one, but not as big as the nose would have suggested. Cause so, really there, I, I, it, it's, it, it hits me, and then the tannins come through, and then after all that's gone on, then you kind of get that, the, it, it zones into the cherry, the cherry comes through again. And it's got a, a fairly nice finish, but I, I, for a, a Malbec, I find it a little bit thin. A little really? thin, yeah, not quite as butch. It's not as butch. It's not quite as bold. You know, it's it's, it's more or less gone. It, because it's on oak, do you think? Yes, yes, yes. It did mention being on oak, so... So I'm looking for that leather and that the earthiness, um, which I'd usually put with a Malbec. And that's not there, and that's generally what you would have got with from the oak. Mm. So, so it's a bit more a bit more fruity because of that. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it, instead of having the complexity and getting hitting all those levels, you are just getting the fruit. Yeah. So I suppose in a way it's good because you are just concentrating on that one, and you're not trying to find all the others. But yeah, mm, for, um, it's not. What, but to be fair, it's a, it's a Mexican red wine. I never thought I'd. Absolutely, I, 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 I'm just amazed that they can. Uh, obviously, there must be sort of microclimates within Mexico that, uh, mm. that they managed to grow it in. But uh, I mean, I thought it was a very decent, very, very tasty, very fruity wine. Uh, and I think again, this is where you're sort of saying this is how it should taste as a Malbec. You're not hitting those buttons, so you're being critical of it. But, yeah. but as a as a wine, I agree the tannins are pretty, uh, you know, quite quite uh, high. But again, I think as we said, you know, that with with uh, Local uh, food and yeah, Mexican yeah. food. I bet this would be a fantastic treat. Well, I think I think it would because once once those tannins have come off there, which also I mean for me they do hide a lot of things as well. The once the tannins are off, then you just be like that'd be like cherry juice, wouldn't it? Just yeah, be, that's, all, that's all you get from that. Yeah, mm. very nice indeed. Well, score wise, now I know you're going to hit it a little bit low because it's. Uh, not hitting your buttons as far as what Malbec should taste like. Yeah, yeah, it's true to say, and I will probably rate this as a Mal as a Malbec. It's going to be down at seventy. Really? Yeah, that low. For a Malbec, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I think I'll, I'd put this at sort of seventy-five. Um, I think it's a, a nice taste. I'd say maybe the only bit I'm taking it down from is because of the tannins. It's a little bit high for my personal taste, but again, that's because we're just taking this straight around any any, any food. <laughs> neat, neat, neat in the cellar. Neat <laughs> in the cellar. Yeah, neat in the cellar. <laughs> So price-wise, <laughs> price-wise, <laughs> it is from m and and Marks and Spencers, for those of you uh, that are watching this outside of the UK, uh, the sort of retail shop that tends to be priced things a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, well, so what would you say? Um, you, know, it's, it's a, um, you know what, this again is a bit of an anomaly because I don't know what a Mexican wine, if it would be more expensive because they don't produce as much, or I'm assuming they don't produce as much, or if it's really well priced. So well, I'll, I'll give you what I personally pay for yep. it and then, we'll, then, then I'll give you the price. So I would personally pay for that perhaps seven pounds as a Malbec, seven to eight pounds, and seven fifty will go in the middle. Okay. I think as a Malbec, from Marks and Spencers, I think they're going to be selling that. It's, it's difficult in Mexico. I don't know. What, but I'm going to throw out just a yeah, tenner. I, I think there's. We're actually selling it for nine quid. Ooh, close, close. So, yeah, so they're probably seven pound fifty, but the rest is the uh, carriage from Mexico. Quite possible. <laughs> the donkey. <laughs> the donkey. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, mm. So. Yeah. I would, I would definitely get. I would really be interested in eat, uh, drinking that with, with um, whilst eating Mexican food. I reckon that'd be a fantastic compliment, which is probably where it's uh, where, it, where it comes comes from. Mm -hmm. So fantastic. Well, uh, they've been really three interesting wines. We we'll have to try and find some other wines. They definitely and, have been interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I think from your point of view, the first two, well, and from mine in terms of scoring, the first two uh, were better than this one. But this is still worth. Any for anyone who likes Malbec and wants to try something a little bit different, mm. still very much worth trying. Oh, definitely a Mexican wine. Yeah. Hey.
<laughs> okay, so our next episode is either going to be a, a gin fun at Wine Mastery, or we've got two next ones that we know that we've got to do. One is we've got the, the gin fun where we're going to do the, the basic gins, uh, so the, the common gins rather than the sort of craft gins. Yep. And we're going to taste those. Um, and also we've got still got yet to do, uh, I've been sort of uh, complained, compla- a couple of complaints coming in. We said we were going to do white uh, wine tasting with white wine, and we've not done that yet. So okay. We must, do, we must do that very quickly. We will do that. Okay, good. Well, we'll see you there. Uh, have a good week or a good hour or a few seconds until you watch the next video. See you then. Cheers. Chin chin. Bye.